Hello viewers, welcome to Centricity Speaks. I am Manu Avasti, founder and CEO of Centricity. Today with me is my industry colleague and friend Ashish Somaya. Ashish is CEO of White Oak AMC, which is one of the most promising AMCs coming up in the market while they come with a very strong track record of investment management over a couple of decades. But it will be very interesting to hear from Ashish and understand what is it there in the market, what you should be looking and we will try to help and resolve uh, some of your doubts and thoughts that you have in mind towards investing into the markets. So straight away, we start with Ashish. So Ashish, welcome to this uh, quick ch chat with us. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank me. So Ashish, my uh, first question is very, very obvious and very pertinent at this point in time. Uh, markets at the topish level that it is currently today ranging between 18,500 to 18,700. Mm. What is a strategy or what is the sense that an investor should move ahead at this point in time uh, with a two to three year outlook? Sure. See, I think, uh, you know, it's obvious that uh, today we are close to making new highs, right? Like you mentioned, 18,500, 18,700. I think historically our high point has been around this range and we hit that somewhere in November 2022. And earlier also, if you go a year back from that point, October 2021, at that time also we were more like 18,400, 18,500. So while we are making new highs, we should also not forget two things. That for the last 18 months, uh, we have consistently been in this 17, 18,000 range. And while the NAVs of your PMS or mutual funds and the index level has been at the same level. Uh, the reality is that if you look at ultimately when you own any portfolio or you look at index, it is constituting of multiple companies. And we are investing there because those companies have earnings and cash flows. So the point is that while we are about to make new highs, in last 18 months we have been struggling in the same band. And in this period, you will be surprised to know that the earnings per share of nifty companies has gone up by nearly 25 to 30 percent. So put it differently, if I told you that 18 months back, a packet of biscuits was 10 rupees, mm -hmm. you might say, yeah, even today it is 10 rupees. Mm -hmm. But 18 months back, that packet of biscuit had five biscuits. Mm -hmm. Today it has six or seven biscuits. So while we are looking to make new highs, actually the market has become more attractive. Mm -hmm. And today's 18,500 is much cheaper than 18,500 of 2021. So optically new highs, but still a good time to invest and maybe market is cheaper today than what it was 18 months back. Uh, very valid point. Uh, the second thought which uh, actually comes very naturally to, to this is, is from uh, the perspective of such investors who may have incidentally gone overweight into equity in last 18 months or so, mm. or probably started investing in last 18 months or so. Mm. Uh, as an investor psychology works, uh, it is obvious that most of the time investors feel that if I've invested, I should start making re returns and equity is an aggressive asset class. Uh, uh, unfortunately, some of the investors tend to feel little disillusioned about their investing itself into equity. Right. At, uh, when you see a, a kind of a sideways market while yeah. the fundamentals yeah. and everything. Uh, so. For such investors, what would be your uh, guidance? Mm. Ki how should they really now stack up? Because it is, uh, it makes them feel that, okay, fixed income might have given me a better return and opportunity cost uh, or, or time value of money is something which they start looking into it. What would be your guidance for them at this point in time or word of wisdom for them and given your uh, strong experience mm. yeah. and how should they really tackle their allocation into equity uh, in times to to come? See, I think uh, one thing which I'll say now, I would urge, you know, uh, all our viewers to keep in mind always uh, just one sentence that equity returns mm. are non-linear and lumpy. So let me exemplify this, Iska, what I'm trying to mean, what I'm trying to say. Generally, we tell people that you should invest in equity for five years plus, five years, ten years, longer the better. But let's take for an example that five years is at least minimum or optimal time frame. What you will notice, Manu, is that when we tell people to invest for at least five years in equity, the reality is that in those five years, the return comes in any 18 to 24 months. Right, let's take a current example. Bulk of the return. Yes, absolutely. Let's take current example. Now we are talking in June 2023. You go five years back. So we were in June 2018. 
I recall June 2018, Nifty must have been around 10,000 kind of. Yeah, yeah, number, yeah roughly. Yeah. So in five years, it is up by 80%. Mm. In five years, it is up by 80% means that there is some 13-14% compounded mm. number yeah. in last five years. Now you jog back from June 2018 till March 2020. First, the market went nowhere. Mm. 2019 was bad. Yeah, market went nowhere. Then there was a tax cut. Mm. So few months it went up. Then there was COVID, and then it crashed. Crashed. So 2018 to 2020, you assume that market did not make a return. In fact, gave negative return. Mm. Then April 2020 till October 2021. You got more than enough. I mean, the market just doubled. All the return of the last five years has only come between April 2020 to October 2021, and October 2021 till now we've already discussed. Yes. It has consistently been 18 yeah, yeah. levels. So what does that tell you? That even in last five years, when index appreciated 80 percent and people must have got 13, 14 percent compounded, even in that, the entire return came came in a period of about 18 to 20 months. Yes. And I would wager that if you take any five-year rolling period, mm. you'll always find that the return comes in 18 to 24 per month. And the balance of the period, either it is going nowhere or it is going down. The problem why we tell people invest for long term is because if you invest for long term, you get compounding. You're likely to capture most of the winning periods. Mm. But you must never forget that you don't know which 24 months is going to give the exactly. And last point I will say is that in last 18 months, if we have not made any return. Mm. The probability that you will make good return in the next couple of years, that probability goes yes, up. No, absolutely. So these are the things to be really kept in mind, rather than getting caught up with what level and all. And absolutely. So in fact, we was uh, 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 we all have been into the industry for over last twenty years, and we have seen various cycles where this has actually panned out. So going through those sideways market phases are probably a good time to add equity rather than being worried about the fact that i am making immediate gratification or not or i am making immediate returns or not uh this particular part actually leads to uh, uh, the next question and uh, probably i'll i'll stem three questions into one question so that uh, you can elaborate it at, at one go so the investors are now looking at two three things hmm. first Okay, if this is the market, and it might this phase might just continue a little further, also stretched little further because there are. Uh, what should be the right investment pattern into equity? Mm-hmm. Should they go lump sum, SIP, STP? What are the way uh, ways to get into the market, which is most idealistic? There is no right or wrong way, but sure. what is the most idealistic? That's question number one. Secondly, what are the possible headwinds? What the market can further C, sure. And third, beyond those uh, headwinds, what are the propelling factors which could possibly lead to that lumpy returns coming into the market over next two to three years? So, sure. I mean, these all th- these three points are uh, interrelated uh, to each other. So, you know, uh, let's understand one thing that why we are at this juncture. You know, where we are saying that last eighteen months there was no return, and what is expected now going forward, right? See, first is that in last 18 months there are three things which have impacted mm-hmm. the market. One thing we should keep in mind is that in 2022, I mean, starting from last quarter of 21 till first quarter of 23, for a longish period, we consistently saw outflow of FIIs. Why that was happening? It started originally with Chinese politics and impact of Chinese politics on the economics. You know, you saw that. Uh, Alibaba IPO was cancelled. Uh, ed tech companies, gaming companies, the whole Chinese tech sector saw some kind of collapse. As a result, US tech sector and even our tech sector, we bore the brunt of it. Second, because of issues with China, the war in Russia, China's impact on Taiwan, politics in Brazil, politics in Turkey, multiple reasons, emerging market as a basket did quite badly, and India is one component of emerging market basket. So FII selling was for these two reasons. third thing then we saw the war we saw commodity prices going up inflation and lastly we saw us interest rates going up in a big way now these are few macro things which have hurt the market in last 18 to 24 months where are we today hmm. one thing we should keep in mind is that through this entire period our fundamentals did not get as badly hurt as it could have been hmm. right maybe because our government has managed inflation maybe rbi has managed inflation better maybe our government has managed the trade and you know Oil and all those things, commodity price inflation, we managed it better mm-hmm. than, and maybe our economic resilience has been better. 
So last 18 months, we've not made much return, but we should be thankful that things didn't get too bad despite the external macro. Finally, we arrived at a juncture where the all the external macro headwinds which I mentioned, they've receded now, right? We know that US interest rates are nearing a top. We know that all the commodity and oil prices have actually started to correct. Our own inflation has started to correct. So many of these things have changed. And with US policy changes and all those things, you can see FI flow also has turned I'm positive. In fact, it's been one of the strongest. It's the strongest, strongest, yeah, absolutely. Last couple of months has been the strongest. So what I'm saying, why I'm giving this background is because last 18 months, multiple headwinds, multiple macros, thankfully now all that is behind us. Behind us. What we are now looking forward to is more focus on our domestic realities. See, in between, you might see some correction because again, some in March, couple of banks collapsed in US. I don't think the worst is behind us. Those things might keep recurring for another three to six months. You might still get some bad news from there. Net-net US economy cooling off hmm. is good for emerging market. Hmm. No. In between, if it causes some volatility, that is a buying opportunity, according to me. So first thing, if you ask me, next three to six months, some volatility, but I would uh, stick my neck out and say any volatility, any fall must be seen as a high conviction buying opportunity. Gotcha. And the second thing is that next 18 to 24 months, I feel that, you know, our fundamentals are holding up. There'll be some news flow and some headlines related to election. But I think as long as we have political continuity, we are in for some really uh, good times. And also keep in mind is that compared to other emerging markets and compared to many developed markets, India's growth potential, India's fundamental story, we've proven right through COVID and last year we've proven that, you know, our fundamentals are better, our economic management has been better. So I think we are in for some good times in the next couple of years. And like I said, any correction should be only taken as an aggressive buying opportunity. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, one question that a lot of uh, people keep asking us and uh, they try to understand it, uh, a slightly difficult one, uh, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, while equity is definitely a long-term promising asset class and uh, uh, there is no doubt about the fact that the longer you stay in the equity market, uh, your probability of making the highest return across any asset class is, is there and it's a highly liquid uh, category of, uh, of investment unlike real estate which is uh, very illiquid. Uh, the debate uh, comes between the importance of staying long into equity as one way of investing and the second is the importance of asset allocation in a portfolio. Hmm. Uh, if you can throw some light uh, on, on both these aspects, how it really uh, should ideally pan out for a new investor. So let's say somebody starting now. Sure. So given that uh, uh, the probably the worst is behind us and we are uh, uh, probably marching into a positive territory, mm -hmm. should he only be looking at equity as an asset class to invest and put all eggs in one basket or mm -hmm. should it be more diversified to take more advantage? Uh, what is your thought around it? Sure. See, there is one thing which is fundamental, conceptual, economically and arithmetically mm -hmm. has to always hold true. Hmm. What is that fact? The fact is that equity as an asset class sits at right at the top. top. Correct. Because what is equity? Equity is a manifestation of an entrepreneur's ownership hmm. of that business. Now, when you talk about debt, hmm. debt is one way for the entrepreneur to raise capital. Hmm. Right. What you look at, say, people make real estate investment. Hmm. But real estate also is a factor of production. Hmm for any entrepreneur. Mm. They might own real estate or they might take real estate on lease or rental. Mm. Ultimately, that is also input. Mm. So, borrowing from debt, mm. using real estate, mm. buying commodities, mm. all of these things, using infrastructure, logistics, all of these things ultimately go as input into a business. Mm. And all of these things are cost mm. for a business. Listen. And the manifestation of ownership of the business is the equity. Rate. Equity. So what we need to understand is that everything else mm. is ultimately being consumed mm. and paid for to drive equity. To drive return because the guy who's the owner of the business or the equity owner mm. is not running his business mm. just to pay the lender, mm. just to pay the landlord, mm. just to pay the commodity seller. Mm. Why he's paying all of them? Why he's using all of them as consumables? Because he can process all this on top of it, make a margin. Mm. And then he is going to get his return. So equity is at sitting at the top. top. That is one thing to keep in mind. 
if there is no equity mm. if the equity see in uh, in basic accounts we understand going concern mm. so for a going concern the equity owner is always going to make more return than all his all. so called mm. lenders vendors suppliers mm. blah, blah, blah right if equity owner is not going to make a positive return mm. then all of these others don't have a reason to exist right. assuming that it is a mm. going concern mm. so we should always keep in mind that this whole world this financial system this economy all of this is going around and around ultimately for the entrepreneur to be able to make a positive return if equity doesn't give positive return there is no entrepreneur there is no finance mm. there is no debt mm. and then there is no lending and there is no vendor nothing mm. right so it all goes around equity and entrepreneur mm. that is going to always be the uh, main thing there is only one problem that equity obviously there will be because it's a risk taker mm. it's a entrepreneur it's a businessman it's not linear mm. there are times when it gives and you know because equity has to work as a concept it is traded in the market otherwise liquidity won't be there mm. so because of these things it gives non linear return mm. it gives variable return now everybody cannot sit next to that entrepreneur and take all that variability and take all that risk mm. that is why some people mm. either directly or through a bank choose to be lender mm. saying that you know look i know you are the equity owner mm. i know that equity ownership has great potential mm. and a share of profit but i know it will come with variability you keep your excess return you give me 8% fixed mm. or you give me commercial lease rental so what happens most of the people who are not equity owners who are lenders or vendors or whatever you call it they are capping their return directly and indirectly they have to understand that if this guy doesn't work i am also not going to get my thing mm. right but they are choosing that for a linear return i give up my upside upside and the equity guy is very clear i am okay with non linear return but i want the full upside without any can mm. the beauty for investors whom you advise mm. the people who can do asset allocation mm. the beauty is that they can have best of both worlds mm. for part of their allocation they can be equity owner mm. and for part of their allocation they can take linear return mm. without worry of risk and maybe not the upside also so i think this is why see directly and indirectly we all are participating in the economy and in the business mm. the only beauty that lot of investors have they have the luxury mm. of determining what type of return they have a choice they have a choice and i think asset allocation is all about exercising yeah. the right choice and so you get combination of return psychology asset. towards risk yes. linear versus non linear i think so that's very uh, aptly and beautifully uh, put put across it could have been more logical uh, than this uh now that uh, the fact is that equity is an asset class uh, which we, which is supposed to give uh, the best return because everything culminates to equity yes uh, a, a subset of equity then comes uh, naturally is the uh, is what kind of a market capitalization people should be looking more in context to the current market uh, level yeah. mid cap large cap small cap because again there is always a debate that going uh, that goes on large cap is safer mid cap is not safer small cap is even more riskier while tr- true to a certain extent but from a long term return perspective and with the current market uh, where it is uh, if you have to put your 100 rupees how will you allocate at at this point in time see i would dare say you know this is uh, so just to put a disclaimer white oak as a company mm. i represent my company we are perpetually multi cap meaning mm-hmm. if you take our entire 6 billion dollars you will find that we are 50 55% large cap and 40 45% mid and small cap so as a house we believe that we have to beat bse 500 mm-hmm. so we will be diversified but on your question i know your question is more topical to which market cap or what uh, people are asking okay uh, at 18500 how should i allocate my 100 rupees into large no, mid on that on that i have no disclaimers i will unequivocally say that it has to be the mid and small caps okay. largely mid cap and let me also define it for you the regulator says that stock number 101 to 250 by market cap is mid cap mm. stock number 251 to 500 by market cap is small cap mm. but the beauty in india if you really ask me you just take this entire basket of 400 stock mm. and i think that is the place to mm. to be in and i'll tell you two or three reasons for this see one is you let's understand ke bhai outside this in the large cap what is there in the large cap first understand what is there in the top 100 see the large cap you will realize that half of it is oil metal commodity utility public sector enterprise all these kind of thing which are exposed to global macros mm-hmm. exposed to commodity cycles exposed to government mm-hmm. policies 
so very macro dependent and cyclical that is one part of large cap the other part of large cap are these beautiful companies you know you have tcs infosys hdfc icici hul itc maybe sun pharma etc so large cap is that is what it is that large cap but look at the excitement about the mid and small cap why i said that you take any macro trend about india you know like lot of people educated economists will tell you that last 15 years we went from being a poor country to lower middle class hopefully next one decade we'll go from lower middle class to middle class mm. world over it is well known that when a country heads towards being middle class top priority of people is look better mm. live better plan for your future mm. so that means directly that everything to do with financial services mm. not just banks mm. you see asset management insurance capital market everything that whole space is mid cap and small cap in fact so many banks and insurance companies are also mid cap right then the other one i said look better live better that is all about discretionary consumption so whether you take footwear apparel beauty products retailing everything in india mm. mid cap and small cap you take household items you take consumer electricals right you take all these guys who make air conditioners and refrigerators and fans and kitchen appliances everything mid and small cap mm. then i give you another example there's a lot of excitement in india about manufacturing and you know the government has done production linked incentives you take which sectors is the pli you take battery manufacturing electrical components auto ancillaries pharma api specialty chemicals defense equipment manufact uh, engineering research, uh, you know engineering manufacturing outsourcing the whole thing is mid and small cap so what i would say if you really ask me is that next decade decade and a half if india as a country has to really meet the aspirations if it has to grow the maximum growth has to come in these 400 or you know that bucket basically and eventually lot of companies from this will move to the large cap zone yes, as well yes in fact you must have read recently one of the global houses they published a report that in india in every 5 year rolling period 20% of uh, the bse 500 becomes a, a multi bagger kind But of thing right so what i'm saying is based on my assessment but the reality is that it has borne out in the past also and i think the future will only amplify it rather than being very very different if you ask me absolutely well uh, thank you so much our viewers uh, i hope you like this quite a quick uh, kind of a fireside round uh, with ashish uh, we are happy to come back to you again with uh, more uh, insight towards the market as well towards the strategy Uh, this is a series which we are going to continue to do with industry stalwarts like, like uh, Ashish who have spent considerable amount of time and studied the market extremely well to help you uh, clear doubts on lot of things that keep coming to your mind lot of things that you tend to hear uh, this is please do consult your financial advisor before taking any call that you are uh, investing into the market This is just a session where you are getting a perspective uh, from us. Look forward to connect with you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you Ashish. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.